starting the recording. The game is starting. Right. Do you want to do you want to share your screen, David? Because I think mine is going to do some weird things. Which. Yeah. Let me let me just stop my JDK because as of as of oh, late. Me too. <laughs> If I run that in the background with absolutely anything else on Silent JDK stuff. Mark, you're 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 still working off of uh Linux, right? That's right. So you haven't had any Sentinel woes. I, I know. I'm I'm so glad I'm on Linux. I mean, it's a matter of time, I think, before we get forced to install something like that. But maybe not. Maybe it's forever gonna be, you know, just you know hands off yeah. i think yeah i don't know it's... i hope so uh, it's it seems weird to impose this restriction on developers and then all developers have to turn it off anyway to to do any real work with the gdk right so. yeah yep okay this is the point okay right. so very briefly i'm going to give you like the the three or four rules that there are paul so black plays first uh then it alternates um you have you 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 can pass, um, and then if both players pass consecutively, that's the end of the game. Okay. Uh, the game is about securing territory. Okay. So you only have a place a stone. That's the only move you can do. You can place a stone somewhere, and you place stones on the intersections, which includes the ac actual uh, edges. So you could place at A1, which is the bottom left corner, Got it. or J9, which is the top right corner. Got it. Um, a stone is alive when it has liberties, and a liberty is an empty intersection uh, above, below, or left, or right of the stone. Okay. And you can kill a stone by filling up its liberties with other stones. Um, what if it's all of your same color that's surrounding it? That is when you form a chain, and I think we're now getting into the realm of where we need to show you to rather than... Okay. Me explaining. So, how about who's starting? Me. I will start by placing there. Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to try and learn. He got you, David. That was the place. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh, no. Okay. So, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to. I'm going to be a bit risky and do something like that. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah, my soul. Okay. Interesting. So if I do that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Oh. So, Paul, you see it's C3 and C4. I have two stones next to each other and D5 and D6. Oh, I see that. Those are what are called chains. And when you have uh, more than one stone connected by a line, they form a chain and therefore they share each other's liberties. So... Oh, cool. That makes sense. Okay. So this, the chain at the bottom left, C2, C3 and C4, have liberties at C5... B4, B3, C2, yeah. and that's it. So David, oh, IP is going to be so disappointed. David, uh, <laughs> you, um, if you put one between his two black chains, you pretend you, you protect him from making an even a longer chain. And that would, right? Correct. Okay. So I could, I could have put one at C5. Um, but there's trade-offs there. Cause like, like that, that may not, he's already got, two of those liberties around that. So I don't know, it's interesting. Hey, IP, we, we're, we're pairing on Go right now. We're doing some, some Go. That's cool. <laughs> Mark taught me this game a couple of days ago. And so this is my second ever game. We're getting into it. Ah, so it's your second loss, you mean? <laughs> so, in fairness, you should have seen Mark's finishing move in our first game. <laughs> It's pretty good. Okay, probably yeah. swapped like half of the board or something. <laughs> so I really yeah. want to see some stones die. Come on, yeah. <laughs> you've got bloodlust. I do. I'm, 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 I'm in it. All right, I I'll threaten a stone, and you can see what happens. Okay, he's now threatened my stone. I don't yeah. like it. 
So we're going to try and defend. Go for it. Right. I'm going to threaten another sting. Who, who's, who's playing white and who's playing black? Uh, David is white and Matt. Uh, okay. Is black. Why are you always threatening me, Mark? Can we just get along? <laughs> So oh, now you got, you got a block of David. You can't let him make this long chain. Well, so the thing is, if I put a stone at D7 to block that, Mark could put a stone then at F6, which would kill my two stones at E6. And exactly. But then you could, fire. oh, I see. But then, ah, uh, I see. And yeah. He would kill his other ones. Then. Ah, man. Yeah, now Force unfortunately. Decisions, David. I know. Unfortunately, those two stones might be lost. I could put down a stone at F6, but then Mark could still put down a stone at G6, which I'm pretty sure will kill all three, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Yeah. Is there, so. is there an offense you could launch on a different side of the board? Oh, I love your thinking, Paul. That's, That's exactly the right strategy. Yeah. Beautiful. That's the way to do it. So we'll just, we'll just go wild cards. Well, maybe we'll like F4. F4, you're thinking? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I've never played this game. I don't know. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't put me in your corner, David. <laughs> it's like yeah, you're boxing. I'm like, maybe you shouldn't have hit him so hard. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna go for H6. Oh, interesting. Okay, all right then. So what do I want to do then? So I think the two stones at E5 and six are, I can kill them at any point now yeah. unless you play somewhere else that threatens me so i'm happy to leave them you know sort of damocles style in the balance mm. um i might what could i do i could try and join some chains up so that i can get more strength in that area i'm not convinced that white has much control over the top right the top left is where i'm unsure so i think I'm going to, yeah, I might as well join that up, see what happens. Good idea. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of your stones under a little bit of pressure. Okay, so um, this is why I shouldn't have children, I think, because uh, I'd be too harsh. So. I'm going to punish you by threatening my one stone by killing two of your stones. <laughs> yeah. I, I just I just learned recently in a podcast that that's the thing that you should do with kids, right? You should never let them win until they can win. Otherwise, you know, they get used to just win. Yeah. But it was more about sports than this. But go as a sport. So, eh, okay. Is it a sport? Probably, if, if chess is a sport, how couldn't go be a sport? So as, as a parent, I think yeah. the right thing to do is to hustle your children where they feel <laughs> like they're doing good. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, hey, take it all away. This. Maybe you want to bet some of your stuffed animals on it. And then you turn it, I'm joking, that would be bad. But <laughs> don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't gamble with your children. Maybe <laughs> your adult children, but. <laughs> So something cool, um, one of the key things is after happening here that Mark was teaching me, um, which is if you look at E6 and 5, you see the I in between the set of stones? Yeah. That is effectively claimed territory. I can't put a stone right. in there or they're just instantly gone because they have no liberties. So right. that is owned by Mark unless I can somehow disband that chain. So I have a crazy idea. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> ever played this game and i haven't thought this through but maybe placing some stones on like row eight or nine to try to like squeeze them uh, i'm mark muted. is talking but he's but he's uh, muted so it's, it's it's what i do it's what i do so um david you're almost right this is one eye you can, white can place inside there. It's when you have two eyes that it's 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 sort of guaranteed safe. So Paul, again, you're right. Playing along row eight is probably the right strategy to try and remove liberties from that chain that I have. 
And if you do that, you might be able to kill off my chain eventually. So I need to work against that. Um, and I'm not quite sure how best to do that just yet. Um, uh, you want me to help my opponents? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe go dead center and work your way out, E8. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I was, I was going to do that. Probably equivalent. I love how the timer on this thing is an hour for each move. <laughs> it's because it's the I wanted to set it the maximum in case we got to talking and you know. Yeah. Sometimes you know when you're when you're strategizing, you're like, I, I need to just meditate for thirty mm. minutes. <laughs> And um, me and Peter used to, um, what, before he was away on paternal leave, we would play chess uh, once, twice, a couple of times a week. And then we started getting into games where it was like, well, we need about three days in between for moves. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't there like email chess? There's that email sounds chess. like a lot of fun, email chess. Mm. Uh, sounds almost as fun as email patches, but not as fun. You probably could play a chess game via email patches. That would be sweet. I hope to do that. Ah, it's it's super easy, right? You just need to know chess notation, and then it's literally just always you know a patch within right. your line. Right. What if what if like the get? I don't know. I was saying what if what if somehow it could like verify the moves or something? That would be interesting. There's know. probably like a tool that you know just pauses chess moves to uh, to an actual state of the chess board, right? There must be like. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a chess board uh, game format. There is for Go, it's called SGF. Yeah. There might be like SCF for chess, I guess. There's a um, there's a one kilobyte JavaScript chess game, um, which, has an, which has a computer playing on the other side. So it has the AI too. And In the one kilobyte? Yes. Um, my brother and I tried really hard to like reverse engineer what was happening. It was so trippy. Uh, <laughs> no, it's going to be... It's gonna it was, be crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I recommend doing it, but it was. Was the AI like just random, or was it actually? Did it have some? It could skill? have been. I don't know. So we had not dissected what it was, you know, and we did not play a full game of it because it was a little, it was a little too bitty. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Helibite. Yeah, I'm, I'm so impressed with the um, like demo scene people that do the very small size. Was that in JS, Paul? But this was in JavaScript. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Um, but it couldn't have been in Dino, right? Because the URLs are too long for the imports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Well, this is where the single character domain names become really valuable, right? The emoji domain names, right? right. No, because they're, they're several bytes long. Ah, true. You want a single ASCII character. That's true. Yes, definitely. That's true. I guess Unless, what, what's also fun that I, I just saw that uh, now there's a Node.js version completely working in WebAssembly. So you now, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the same. So uh, what, there's what? Okay. There's a WebAssembly version of Node.js now. That's so cool. I really, I thought, well, because it, it's V8, I thought it just supported WebAssembly like already. No, you have a fully a Node.js fully compiled into WebAssembly, so you can basically have Node.js oh. in the browser. <laughs> I yeah. see, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> mad. That's madness. That's really cool, though. Like, think of all the. Um, the like live the browser editing live preview things you could do with that you don't have to spin up a back end to run like your linter or whatever you can just run the web assembly node.js i'd hate to see like what that does to your browser tab in your memory like what if you're running a webpack build on your browser tab uh, if you've not watched it I've just posted a link to a, a video that goes into all of this it's sort of semi-serious but it's actually quite prescient um highly wow. recommend it wow it's is does it quote WebAssembly as the death of javascript is that part of it? pretty much yeah, yeah. i could see it that. predicts that yeah because it talks about asmjs and i think it was, it was done before WebAssembly was a thing 
Which yeah. Is interesting. yeah. What's What's interesting to me is that that recently um, with the that now ES build and SWC become really really common in use. I just saw yesterday that Parcel's new version is using SWC. So for transpiling, they're essentially you know they're using a program written in Rust. And uh, yeah, if if we would do something, you know, productive in this call, we could have tried out how fast uh, whether transpilation of our front end assets with ES build works or not. But you know, let's play some code. We we can stop this at yeah. any point. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna see this through. I want to see it through. Uh, I imagine though it's possible for a Go game to last forever. The fact that you can take pieces off is a possible that not one that's maybe evolved this far, but are there games that could last forever? You like mean basically you have like a glider-like scenario like yes. in the game of yes. life? Yes. I don't think so because, um, so there's one of the rules in Go is that you can't return the board to a state that it's in before. Whoa, okay. my gosh, that's a lot to keep track of. Uh, it's actually not, it, it just means, it essentially means you can't sort of undo the go, the move that your player, the other player just did. Um, but when when you have structures with two eyes, which I've nearly got with my, and so is, uh, uh, so is David actually in the bottom right. When you have a structure with two eyes, um, you can't kill it. And so it just takes up that space forever. Right. Um, so eventually the board would get filled up, I think. But you can just play an infinite board. <laughs> infinite go. <laughs> uh, right, I might. I'm, I'm just excited to see how I'm going to lose this one. It's going to be great. <laughs> this is one. It's going to be great. Uh, I, IP, have you ever have you ever done Rust? Nope. I it's 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 my favorite language these days. I really? Okay. I love Rust. It's really cool. Uh, and comment from no, I, I, to be honest, like I haven't done a compiled language since. I mean, I'm not even counting Java. So like eight years, maybe when I did some C plus plus at university. Why aren't you count? If, why aren't you counting Java, man? If I count Java, it has been since you know I've been with GitLab because I was working in Scala and. Uh, Java. But a native, but a native, like a, a native. Yeah, language. like compiling down to uh, like assembler stuff. Yeah, that's what's so sweet about Rust, though, is it's you know that you get that low level, you get that low level win that you get with C plus plus. But the yeah. the type safety and memory safety is is out of this world. It prevents you from shooting yourself in the foot, which you can easily do in C plus plus and. Uh, There's this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the only thing that I ever did in C was a simple UDP and a use, simple TCP server client thingy in university, you know, when we had network stacks. So, you know, it was really rudimentary. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, no. You know? you're, you're good. But Rust, it also has packages like which C doesn't do. Like, Rust is awesome. Uh, and Rust compiles to WebAssembly. So, if we're ever thinking of doing WebAssembly stuff, uh, I mean, everything compiles to WebAssembly, so like that's, that's true. I know, I I know. What you mean. <laughs> like, I mean, you can you can even compile JavaScript to WebAssembly, right? Like, there's like, isn't there? I I once found a nice graph, like how you go through different compilation targets and tools, to basically from arbitrary language to arbitrary language, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it, that's interesting. There, it, it it does feel like there's some like reinventing of the wheel that continues to happen. In in software land. Uh, Definitely. Like, for example, you have a perfectly working tool called Node.js and someone comes around and builds Dino, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, or oh, the compilation that's story. I, I, that's the I mean, most of you were in the thread. Oh, gosh. Like, compiling Node.js. I, I mean, if we were to compile Node.js on our development machines ourselves, we would probably, you know, during onboarding, lose a week or every time we update. <laughs> it's okay. it's ridiculous. I mean, for me, I now have even more respect for projects like Dino and Node because there are so many moving parts and, you know, it just works and you can download a compiled version and have a nice life, right? Yeah. 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 The, the, 
for the for the two cores, it was what a timed out after two timed out after two and a half hours. Yeah, and that was in our that was in our pipelines though. And those aren't the those aren't the beefiest machines. No, I actually wanted to try to compile it on my Raspberry Pi here to see if it's faster than GitLab CI. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> to see if it's faster than this. I mean it has it has four cores, right? Like IP IP creates a runner for gitlab.com called <laughs> IP Pi. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, like that, that's exactly how I solved the problem, right? I created a runner in Digital Ocean that works on a machine with 16 cores. That's that's how I solved the problem. Because I went to the distribution right. folks and was like, hey, do we have fast runners somewhere where I, like in a project or group? Yeah, we have, but not available yeah. for you, essentially, was the answer, so we, right? We had to recompile it because we had to take the dynamic OpenSSL linking and make it... Yeah, start. make it FIPS compatible, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's and it. yeah, and I mean, that that change with the FIPS stuff just has been released two days ago. <laughs> so there isn't wow. like a bunch of images out there already or something like that. But yeah, it was crazy. It was also funny is like, you can tell with how many processes or cores it's supposed to compile. And when, when I was compiling it locally with four cores, it was just failing. But with 16, it was working. I, I mean, it's like funny. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, you know, I think that's why, um, you know, I've, I've, I've worked in some environments where it was not expected you were able to build it. You, to build the thing, it had to be sent to a build server or something. And, yeah. uh, it was not expected that anyone was locally going to build all of the thing. And it takes a lot of planning to like, to like, since we only build part of it, we got to make sure all the contracts and everything is, it's, it's, it's a interesting problem. I like working in the native space. I, I think that's fun. Uh, but on projects of that size, yeah, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge challenge. Yeah. It's also funny, like, I Docker has this feature called squash, which is experimental, which basically takes all the layers you build and squashes them together. And so I wasn't able to do that? it because because it's experimental, right? But what why why would they even do that? Like isn't you that would do that because exactly what I'm about to explain is oh, okay. you obviously need to install like G uh, C plus plus and everything in Docker to compile Node, but in the end you don't you need it, right? So, and you have two choices, either move all of the build stuff into a script or, um, you know, you have multiple layers built in Docker. Mm -hmm. And so you can squash it so that you basically don't have to move things into a, an, into a script. And the interesting thing was like oh, how much data was needed to build Node.js, like all the packages installed and the source of OpenSSL and whatnot was like multiple gigabytes. And then in the end, if you squash the Docker image, it's just like 40 megabytes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's also so executables. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That sounds, that yeah. sounds different. In, uh, <clears throat> in other news, keep an eye on the board. Yeah. I am. Ah, oh, snap. What oh. happened? <laughs> Man, David, I saw oh. that you, like, you like placed the piece, and I was like, "Oh man, David's got that one. He got it." Oh, yeah. But he did. What happens? Um, so did you see a uh, was it a five you put down, Mark? Correct. Yeah. A five, yeah. and then my chain that started at C eight all the way down to A three had nothing to connect to. Which yeah. Really so what, what was the last thing that uh, that David placed? He placed so I, a, I a so that that was the mistake, right, Mark? Yeah, I think I, if he did a five, it would have been the same thing. I think, well, I think, um, I think this the, was my mistake here. This was my mistake. If I had built down, it might have been okay. I don't think so. Uh, I think the error was earlier on, it was when I placed I one of the ones in B. Yeah, so somewhere around here, you made the mistake, <laughs> I think. I, I think the mistake is that you started to play Mark, right? Like, <laughs> Hey, he's got to learn somehow. Yeah. It's just like playing Peter at chess. It's like, it's just a consistent losing streak. I think Peter's up to like, I don't know, like 80 wins and I haven't won a single game. <laughs> what, kind of, uh, what kind of friend are you, Mark? Hey, <laughs> let me teach you this game. It's it's a oh, colleague, another friend, right? <laughs> I'm joking, Mark. I'm joking. This is, how you, 
This is this is how you learn. This is you know it's got to be tough. All right, I'm gonna try and double down on my fellow over here on the right, but I think this board might be lost to my. <laughs> You got to get one capture, man. You got to get one capture. I kind of have this. I have like this thing going on on the right, but it's like it's kind of disjointed and not really multipleized. Uh -oh. Hey, folks! I have a great idea. Let's build a Go-based capture that we call Recapture, and you have to capture a thing on a Go board. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to link to like the rules of Go so that the <laughs> users can read that first. Yeah maybe a short tutorial video or something like that. Yeah. Bad reality is that probably computers can do this better than humans. That's the yes. Nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, go is still pretty hard for computers, right? Like, no, well, it's, it's now nowadays the best go machine will destroy the grandmasters. Yeah. I, I imagine there's less going on here than chess, like the, the forward thinking, of... It has more going on than chess. So chess engines, because you essentially the more constraints you have, the easier it is for a computer, right? Like, um, like with the moves and everything, there are just too many possibilities spanning here. Well, but there's more possible. I'd say there's more possibilities in chess. Uh... No, I don't think so because you <laughs> you can rule out so many moves from the get go because either they're not possible or they are just like. Oh, you're using your losing your queen right away. We don't follow even follow that tree of decisions, right? Yeah. So a normal go board is 19 by 19. Oh. And the first move can go in any one of those 100 and uh, whatever 19 by 19 squared is places. Yeah. And then the second move can go in any one of the remaining spaces. Yeah. Whereas with, with chess, you can only move pawns forward or maybe the, the knight, I guess. So it's it really is just a combinatorial explosion. But I think um a good AI would group similar moves. And I think in, in Go, the, the groupings of similar moves, I don't, I don't see. So the thing is, yeah, you're right. Good AI, and that's what they've done, right? So they trained like an, an AI on Go boards and games and whatnot. And, you know, it did the AI thingy. But I mean, traditional chess engines have yeah. been beating chess players since a long time. And without any AI in the sense of, you know, like without any deep learning stuff, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. But Go just came out like 20 years ago. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark, here's a question for you now. So in this particular state, I mean, what's the logical conclusion of the game? Do you just continue to play until I have lost all So I think um, um, you could probably win some territory if I just continue to pass from now on. Uh -huh. um, however, if I you know, respond to any of your moves, I don't think you'll be able to win any territory. Yeah. So you so would resign. That's the... I think, yeah. But we might as well both pass at this point, I would suggest. Um, unless you want to continue, which is fine by me. Remove the dead stones. Oh. Uh, so all of the white stones that you have, yeah, that are sort of uh, alpha transparencyed. Um, uh -huh. They're going to go. They're, they're dead, yeah. <laughs> they're dead? Be Why are they dead? They're because gone. they cannot... Uh, they're dead because they can, in principle, be killed. Mm-hmm. The, the stones, the white stones at the bottom right cannot in principle be killed because they have two eyes, you see? Yeah. Because I could never place yeah. in J3 or H2 because that would be a suicide move on my part. Um, oh, interesting. So there's some, so, so at the end of the game, it's only, it's not about how many pieces are actually on the board. It's about how many pieces have longevity on the board. Well, Sort of, like I said, s stones can either be in a live state or, or an indeterminate state. And if you reach the end of the game, anything that's indeterminate doesn't contribute towards the score. Mm. 
Um, and there's multiple ways to do, like there's, chi there's Chinese style uh, scoring and there's Japanese style scoring. One involves the stones you've captured and the number of stones in the board. The other is just about territory you've surrounded. And while they're two different approaches, the end result is the same, which is interesting. I, I thought that the Chinese style is you pa paint them in a different color and, you know, everyone gets an even amount of uh, pebbles. Is that a communist joke? Yes. Right. Thank you. That sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, David. Mark's using this unfair scoring system. Well, well what does auto score do? Does auto score? <laughs> yeah, what in the world is? Yeah, why is there two buttons here? Is it? Just tell I me who won. It, I think it's because sometimes it's hard to programmatically determine exactly what are what stones are alive and what are dead. So it has to say to the humans, here's what I think stones are dead. Do you agree? An auto score, I think, is basically saying, I trust the ju computer's judgment about what's dead. Okay. So I think you, if you click accept remove stones. Yeah, can we see what happens there? Oh, I think, do you have to click accept as well? Because I have a little take here. Uh, that wins. Oh, oh yeah, that makes okay. sense. <laughs> So what's really cool here is you get a like a, a graph now. Of, oh. um, <laughs> who, basically, who was dominating the game when? Yes, and it also highlights key moves, which is quite interesting. That is interesting. So yeah, from that point on, apparently it was mine. <laughs> so yeah, basically, you know, your mistake, uh, David, you should have resigned after 10 moves, right? Like, ah. Uh, David, at 10 moves, David's like, oh, I've seen this game before, I quit. I know what's going on. I'm just going to bow out right now. That's absolutely fascinating. That Thanks. curve is wild. Like, there's, like, time dips, like, the 80% in Mark's favor. Oh, uh, it's, a, it's yeah. a percentage. So when was it? I see so you, it, can, it, you can toggle, you can change the toggle to score. And this is the projected yeah. score. Uh, wow. That is absolutely insane interesting although in fairness i mean it seems relatively accurate, but like it's just yeah no it's 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 absolutely wild yeah it's like it knows none of this counted because this was about to be this exactly yeah yeah wow that's really cool. nice that's awesome that was great my second game who's next paul <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we can we can play another game or we can uh do we can look at the thing. I built a thing today, and I need some help with wording. Let's mm -hmm. yeah, let's let's do that. Do you want yeah, to share screen ideas? Let's start doing some thanks, real work. Thanks for uh, thanks for playing Go. That was a lot of fun, and it was very it was very enlightening for me. Thanks learn? for indulging me. Did we? Did it's also nice that this is recorded, by the way. Yeah, this is GitLab plays Go, and then works on something that IP is working on. <laughs> cool. So you folks know this cool page. Um, it is uh, pausing release posts and you can basically search, hey, between 13.0 and 13.11. Are we still doing want... release posts? Yes, we're still doing release posts and this is pausing the YAMLs, right? That's cool. Um, yeah, and this is pretty neat also for deprecations. Also some statistics, right? Like you can see, like, you know, I don't know oh, which what? So we have stages here. I'm just gonna go with secure. You can see the features and whatnot delivered every mm. every milestone, right? Yeah. But now we have the task. Oh my gosh, this is just releases. Um, can you hit create? Uh yes, I can hit create. Sure. Like cool. So yeah, that maj is that premium mostly then? Uh, oh, okay, cool. The color, yeah. Create is create is a lot. The color changed? No, I don't think. I think at the top it's just the at the top is the number of features, and I think yeah, by by licensed here, and on the bottom it's uh, by by stage. Uh, oh, that's yeah. that's what that color is. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, here it's unfortunate it's the same colors, but I didn't build this, so uh, I will pass it on to Mark. So the thing is, you know, the, we have the problem that hey, on GitLab.com uh we don't release once per month right we release twice per day so i sat down today with 
Martin, and we started parsing all the merged MRs into uh, into a view, like so all merged MRs deployed after a certain date. So you can see MRs, and then we are essentially parsing the parsing the MR description to find the related issues. And so you can also look for issues. You know, it's basically all the issues that wow. had a related MR happening wow. in the last whatever, right? Um, here you can see it's, it's locally. Really so it's just limited to the last hundred or something, but you can see, hey, here's a deployment. Here's some things that have been deployed on uh, the 19th. And yeah. here's some things that have been deployed today, right? Can you, um, can you search for me? Uh, no, funnily enough, you cannot search for people <laughs> because I'm dropping all the author information. Here, the interesting bit is basically, hey, what happened? Because sometimes people are like, hey, is this known? And actually, you could look it up here, right? If a certain thing happened. So you still can search for stuff uh, like um, per stage, right? So I don't know. You could go and search for DevOps secure, right? Um, yep. And, and so... Cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the thing is right now, this is not very helpful here at the top. And I feel like I would like to have a better description, but you know, it's my Friday. I'm not good with English. So I thought we could maybe brainstorm how we could describe those four tabs so that you don't need a call with IP to explain what these four tabs do. And yeah, okay. um, I don't know if that's boring and we should look at something else. Well, I don't, um, I don't mean to brag, but I've worked with professional UXers before. Um, yeah. Well, I have some experience. Um, Naming things. I'm joking. Mainly being told that I didn't name things well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. I'm still a little at a loss of what, what is like the problem we, we're... So multitude of problems, actually. One problem yeah. being, hey, something happened, you know, pipelines look different, right? Pipeline. That's one use case, right? Mm. Um, something, something is a another use case and, you know, this affects no, I mean, might be, but like, hey, I'm the manager for ecosystem. I want to know what made the release post and I can basically quickly check every issue that relates to ecosystem that you know uh to see whether you know it made production before the 22nd or before the 17th or whatever we're looking at right um yep. yeah so there are a few use cases here um essentially because we don't have an overview what kind of landed we don't have like all, a changelog for.com right we have in progress release posts, but they are not related to deployments at all, kind of, right? Because it could be that something is deployed on the right now to gitlab.com, but it actually, the release post is, you know, going to be finished in two weeks or something. Right. Um, yeah. So it seems like the most, what seems like to me, the most helpful part of this screen is that, is that far left field deployed to production. Like that's the bit that I think a lot of the PMs aren't aware of. They, they subscribe to like the labels and stuff, but it, they, no one really knows when did this actually hit? Can I even include this? So it's actually funny because we have a bot that does exactly that, right? So that's if funny. something is deployed to production, we create a new deployment. I assume via the API. And then, you know, the bot goes around and basically says, okay, this MR is in this deployment and this MR is in this deployment and this. And so it actually, you know, I assume that would be very funny if you basically, yeah, all the merge requests have it, but uh, the key or most of the merge requests have it, I hope. The issues probably don't. And that's exactly the thing. And that's exactly the thing that we kind of try to solve is automatically going from the MRs to the linked issues and say, hey, these are the ones that, you know, it also doesn't mean that the issue is closed. Huh? So maybe issue state would be great, um, but because there could be multiple MRs, right? Related to one issue, but it means like, hey, today something uh, happened that related to that issue, right? To automated removal of expired redirect files, right? Mm -hmm. 
which is funny because it's even an issue that's not even part of the GitLab org project, right? Can I ask what's uh, on this screen here before you change yeah. it up? Ah, uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, the right-hand column, related issues, and then it's a link to MR, what is yeah, that? Yeah, so that's, that's basically, ah, yeah, that's funny. So um, it's just wrong. Uh, it's basically <laughs> the, no, it's, so basically the way it works, we're getting all the MRs deployed, then parsing the descriptions going to the issue, but it can be that multiple MRs are targeting the same issue as described before. And this is essentially not the IID of the MR, but like the global ID of the MR. I just need to fix up the styling of this. Okay. Yeah. So See, it's, not, the it's not a related issue then, it's a related MR. Yes, it's basically related issues or related MRs, right? Related issue of bull, okay. Re related issue bull, yeah. Basically, also we started with the merge request and while we were working on it, uh, we found out, hey, the thing with the merge request doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So right yeah. now we're looking at issues. Are these issues? Yeah, this is issues. This is issues and MRs, just both. And this is just MRs. Because I, the problem is I, it cannot be I, one or the other because sometimes, uh, I mean, quite often you have MRs where someone is like, hey, there is no issue for that, right? Which is actually pretty yeah. funny because especially if you look at something that is like bug and then there's this one, fixed drafts not showing after reload. And it's like, hey, this seems to be like a relevant bug, uh, but there's actually no corresponding issue, right? Um, or there might be, and it's just not linked, right? So and that's, that's- And that's okay. Like if we see a bug, we should fix it. Just go. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But it's uh, the problem is like, I assume that this bug must have been in production potentially. So it could still, until this merge request was deployed, because when was it merged? Merge. Yeah, I, ideally it'd have some sort of traceability. Ideally, it would yes, have exactly. Or it could be that in the meanwhile, even once this thing is merged, if it's not deployed yet, you uh, might have people creating issues, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Anyhow, so so maybe I guess, it's the I wrong guess, people. I, I maybe gotta, I should have said uh, brought this to a call of technical writers or something. Uh, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a proposal for you. Yeah, because uh, I think dot com is a person. Um, yes, Kim. Yeah, he's actually German. Yeah. That's true. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. What do you think of calling this tab production? Uh, I was more thinking tab-wise to go, uh, and you're not seeing my editor. I was thinking instead of .com, gitlab.com, uh, latest, latest feature, latest releases, latest something. So... Let me just share all of my screen because that makes it a bit easier. Like latest. And it's actually funny because I'm writing this in, uh, in half of the logic here, like the other three tabs, uh, the backend is written in Python. <laughs> so I'm actually using PyCharm for a change. I think something like, yeah, latest releases, latest updates, latest. Oh, latest updates is nice. Yeah. Features is tough because features, it's, we just saw there's a bug fix. And so it's not necessarily like a feature. Uh, yeah. GitLab.com latest updates. I love it. That's yeah, cool. that makes, that's pretty informative, I think, at a glance. Yeah. So this, this probably is like uh, released features instead of just features. So what? Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, sorry, it's roll up, takes a second. Yeah, what's release? What is that tab? This one? Uh, sorry, it's I don't have it locally right now. This is basically the thing if you're not on .com and you are, oops, <laughs> uh, and you are like, hey, I, I have a GitLab instance that's, you know, 13.6. I want to know what happened between 13.6 and 13.11 because I want to update to the latest version, right? This sounds like a change log. Yes. So, so release change log. I just release feature release log. Changes. I mean, change, we call the change log comparison. Change log comparison. I mean, it's not really you're not comparing change log as much as you're aggregating them, right? That's true. Um, I don't know. So, so in in released features, you said it's not available locally. What would it be actually doing? 
Is it part? What's it parsing? Uh, it's parsing all the release posts. Release like post. here, That's you can see it's post, already right? online. So it pauses the release posts, and you basically can order by. It's release. always funny history. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's to do with release posts then. So like it's release, release. post. Um, yeah. announcements or something that's true release even making explicit with the release post release features i don't really know what that means because i don't know the timing of it i don't know does mm. it mean what's coming up because the other tab was about what's coming up and maybe something consistent with the other tabs so or release post updates what, what what do you think uh what do you think about self-managed release features because it still applies to sas yes it? That's, that's true, but the problem is that basically as we have rolling releases, right? I don't know if there's a good word for self-managed n.com. Like, you know, it's basically, we, we just, we call it GitLab release, right? So I don't know. How about uh, version history? Because it's the GitLab versions that it's, that it's comparing or v version release yeah. history. F features Feature by history? F features by version, yeah. V version, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, uh, GitLab features by version. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, it's, Come on. correct me if I'm wrong though, sometimes it's not just, I don't know what everyone else feels about. And, and so that's the thing, right? After, after I have this nice self-explaining title, I was thinking, hey, wouldn't it make sense to kind of write a self-explaining i don't know what is what is the what is the thing <laughs> alert here right i don't know bootstrap how does one bootstrap uh like on this uh you can compare feature change ah, so we actually have some language here right uh you can use use the filters below to uh, what 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 do we actually do? So maybe maybe even putting the alert inside the tab, to saying like what it is. Yes, that's what I trying what I'm trying to do. Oh, okay. Um, I basically basically what I want to have is instead of this alert info whatever. Um, no oh, roll alert. That's funny. So. Okay, cool, roll alert. Um, basically, instead of this one alert at the top. Yep, yep. Because this page itself basically has four features, right? Um, so I want to have a small introduction like at the top of the readme, right? That is like, hey, these are the four things. Uh, and then- uh, hey, David. These are the four things, right? Um, and uh, then you have a more detailed explanation on each of those things. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes yeah. Sense. Um, yeah, that, uh, that makes sense. What's the deprecations tab? Um, that's basically like the features tab, but for deprecations. So you can be like, Hey, you know, I'm, I want to mm -hmm. know when a thing is deprecated. Um, and you can be like, hey, I don't know, I'm caring for uh, dependency scanning, right? And you can basically see what. Cool. Wow. So yeah. I guess this is deprecations by version as well, similar to the features by version. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, so main view. Uh, deprecations by version. You, yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. Deprecations by version. Uh, GitLab uh, feature statistics. Cool. I love it. Okay, that. so for me, that's also means just to have some more useful pairing probably having this thing as the last tab, like the GitLab com updates, because these three are kind of yep. related and maybe even swapping around the 
yeah. statistics and uh, deprecations, right? Maybe you could even put those tabs inside of another tab. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, Ivy. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it was just like I wasn't laughing at the joke, right? Um, <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is really neat. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for hooking this up. It sounds really helpful. I think, like, I, maybe this is just me because I'm this way yeah. inclined. I, d I don't know if a product manager would feel the same way, but I feel like I really need to know. I need to know where the data for each of these tabs is coming from. So features by version is coming from um, the release post. Release posts and the feature statistics is coming from release posts as well. Yes. And deprecations by version, I guess, is release posts as well. Yes. So they're all release posts except for latest updates, which is. Yes, merge uh, API and but that's a good point. Like describing what actually happens. Um, yeah, having a big header that says what is this and where does it come from sounds really helpful. Uh, making that really uh, visible. But that's yeah. This, this seems uh, this seems really um, this seems really helpful. So that's that's interesting. I think the if for the fir first three tabs, then if the uh, the alert in the tab says search release posts for dot dot dot, and yeah. the fourth one says search merge requests and issues and what have you, something like that. Yes. So that's that's actually a good good call out. So I was thinking to go with a crazy UI element I learned about recently at the top. I was basically going to explain what these four things are, right? And because we have now nicer names, should actually features by version, feature statistics, deprecation by version. So what, we could do that, but it's also like you realize we now are, are, are copying the same text is visible multiple times all at once. So maybe if yes. the user wants to understand something, maybe it's just enough for them to just to click on it and to see. The, 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 the problem is I basically want to have like a landing page where you okay. under, can see what, you know, like one sentence, right? Uh, com like these, this compare all feature yeah. changes between uh, different releases, right? So yeah. basically like, hey, uh, then come, um, See how many see, uh, statistics um, on GitLab's feature development over time, right? Something like that. Um, and uh, deprecations. Uh, well, I've got to hop off. Um, yeah. But this looks cool. You could like do like a really cool like application grid thing. Uh, like the whole page takes up with these like a like a grid with custom icons for each one of these things. Uh, and then maybe have stories. Anyways, IP. <laughs> what? <thanks for> work. <laughs> Okay. Have a good one. Have a nice weekend. Thanks for working Bye. on this. See you, everybody. Yeah. It was fun. Bye.